All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Aswan Crookshank here, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker, former Division I college football player and current five-time published author and educator here for another Wednesday's Win Entrepreneur Tip. We are giving it to you every here, every single, actually, you know, if you follow me on YouTube, you know I bring it every single day, but more specifically on Wednesday mornings, I do something called a Win Entrepreneur Tip, a term that I have coined that is basically taking the entrepreneur mindset, which if you don't know what the entrepreneur mindset is, it's actually have being an entrepreneurial, entrepreneur-minded person, but working a job and having, being blessed and fortunate enough to have a job or have a situation in which your entrepreneurial goals and what you want to do for your own business is aligning with whatever company that you actually work for. That's what an entrepreneur actually is. And my sports background is a form of, like I mentioned, former football player, coach, scout, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I took the, the winning phrase, right? Because that's what matters. That's what matters in the game. You know, that's what keeps you in the game is you got to win. Obviously, there's a lot of life lessons and things like that that come along with the game. But winning Winning is what everyone is striving to do when you're in the football world. So I've taken the the win, the entrepreneur, put it into one phrase, put it into one series every single Wednesday. I come on and I talk to you about a win entrepreneur tip. Again, as I tell you every single Wednesday, if you're used to tuning into these, and I think this is this is tip number twenty. Tip number twenty, if I'm not mistaken. It still feels like I'm just getting started, man, because I have so many. So much experience as an entrepreneur, as a wintrepreneur, that instead of me trying to draw these things out in a long, drawn out episode, I can only give it to you like in small bite sizes at a time. So every Wednesday, here we are, wintrepreneur. So all that being said, before I get into today's actual tip, I got to send you to make yamove.com that's m-a-k-e-y-a-m-o-v-e.com. Make sure you go get a NIL athlete bundle. We see what's going on in the college athletics game. All right. That's a that is a organization. The college, I will more specifically, college football is an entity that I am incredibly, incredibly grateful for and thankful for because it taught me so many lessons in business. All right. So what I've done is I've created a book package made just for you, just for you, the person listening to me right now. All right. Which includes three out of the five books that I actually wrote. First one you will get is Make Your Move, all right? A unique look into boxing, dance, and entrepreneurship. In this book, I make the bold claim that boxing and dance are the best two activities that you can be doing for whatever your number one sport is. So if you know a hip movement, if you want to swing a baseball bat, it's the same thing as throwing a hook throwing a hook in boxing, when you're taking a jab step on in basketball, it's the same thing as taking that jab in boxing. So many of the so much of the crossover when it comes to your mentality, your the the way you go about doing your business. And also when it comes to dance, your flexibility, your ability to do a whole lot of different things, all of that is jam-packed and make your move. All right. That's coming in the bundle. Next one, most relevant book as of me recording this, I am actually working on a uh, six one that it's going to most likely be about, you know, entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff. But the most recent one as of this recording is Transferring D1, a practical guide on how to navigate the chaotic world of college athletics. We see how chaotic this world is. It's an absolute, it's an absolute mess. You got guys transferring this one. You got coaches getting paid. I mean, this year there are going to be some coaches that are getting paid millions and millions of dollars just to get fired. They're not getting paid millions of dollars to get hired. This is how fucked the system is. The system is so bad right now that you have college coaches right now who ain't worth a shit who are going to be getting paid millions of dollars to get fired, folks. To get fired, to leave. They're not getting paid these millions just to, to go coach. They're getting paid to leave some programs. That's how messed up the entire system is. So transferring D1 is a way of navigating a lot of this stuff. And it's been, it's really going to be centered about round college football and building a feeder system so other sports are able to other sports are able to kind of follow suit and create some balance within this game. So again, most recent one and this one, I collaborated with 10 other authors, and it's called The Six-Figure Athlete. As you can see, understand, all right, this is very important because I lived through a, a major injury myself, is when you are playing sports, when you are involved with athletics, especially as a player, or more specifically as a player, you're always one injury away, one injury away, away from your career being completely over, finished, done with, all right? 
You need to be figuring out ways in which you can convert your skills that you have as an athlete and be converting them into cash and cash flow. And that's what we dive into in the six figure athlete. So six figure athlete transferring D1 and make your move all available at make your move dot com. Uh, just hit the shop button and you'll see the uh, the. You'll see the you'll see where you can make a purchase and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, if you do, if you would like to go a step further and, and subscribe to my weekly email list, just shoot me an email to say you want to subscribe to it and you would actually get a 10 percent discount off of those uh, three books. So all that being said, let's get into today's Wintrepreneur tip. And it, I got to take you back. And I know I've talked about my, for the regular listeners, just know, I uh, I know you know that I've worked several, several different fitness franchises, whether it's corporate, whether it's the franchise, whether it's another mom and pop gym, my core, like when it comes to my working experience, I learned a lot of different things, really kind of getting, getting a lot of gems and getting a lot of mentorship lessons, mentorship mentorship per se when it comes to fitness sales how to keep a gym open how to make it so people are coming in the relationship between the manager the seller and the actual trainer you know I worked my first job was I was a front desk associate for a gym named Washington Sports Club it was located in South Bethesda right there on Wisconsin Avenue a very very busy street and there was always people in there you know some of the best well, I remember actually getting hired and my manager told me look some of the entrepreneurs coming in and out of this club every single day all right and i have a ton of entrepreneurship less like i didn't know i was an entrepreneur then i was only what 19 years old i just tore my acl and this was the first time i wasn't playing football and since i was seven years old so i was it was hard for me to even just get there it was hard for me to even function without the game right so what happened was i was learning the business in this atmosphere you know you had a lot of former athletes you had a lot of more specifically a lot of former college football players that were coming in as trainers and you know, still trying out for the league and all that. It was a very, a very, very unique opportunity that I never really <clears throat> appreciated at that time. But now as I've gotten older, I realize how unique that opportunity is when it comes to my overall story and everything I'm all about, right? So they had a situation where, hold on, let me get a silver. By the way, shout out to Access, Access Nation. <laughs> People are loving Loving the samples, loving the uh, loving the energy. It's definitely, I'm only down to actually one cup of coffee because I got a good supply of access energy because I, I won this. Actually, let me show you here. I actually won. <laughs> I won this competition here. If for you regular listeners, you guys already know it's this Creative Fest, and I became came second place into in this competition. So, you know, I uh, I I support. I support. I support. We'll leave it like that. Anyway, but anyway, when it comes to one of the one of the the more more so the lesson that I want to talk to you guys specifically today about it is about efficiency and using these forms of technology to make it so you get to the desired result that you are hoping to get to. All right, so there was a time in which I was kind of it, it was well we'll say the gym was it was kind of slow. You know, people were it was sort of the late night. I, I can't remember. I'm thinking it was. No, in fact, it was sort of the late morning. This was after it was like a weekend morning where a lot of people came in, they got their workout in, they left. So by the time it got to maybe what, 9 30, 10, 10 ish, close to, close to 11, the gym kind of died down and people were off about enjoying their Saturday and all that kind of stuff. And that's fairly common in the fitness industry, right? So I was still working in the hourly wage and I'm working front desk. And it just so happened that one of the managers, his name was shout out to Mark Mitchell. He was there. And, you know, because there wasn't a whole lot to do, most of the work had already kind of been done throughout the week. We're just kind of waiting for the gym to close and, you know, numbers were right and all that kind of stuff. Right. So they had a situation, they had a situation where Mark was telling me, Mark was actually telling me about when he and Bubakar, so Bubakar was the seller, Bubakar was the sales associate, and he and Bubakar worked sales at a different gym. So it had a situation where Mark was telling me, yo, there was a time, there was a time, he goes, there was a time in which there was a gym, there was a guy coming in for a membership, right? There's a guy coming in for a membership, and 
Bubakar was at lunch. Yeah, this is what happened. It's all coming back. This is all fresh now, guys. So Bubakar was at lunch. So Bubakar was at lunch and Mark, and there was a guy coming in interested in the membership. So what happened was Mark got the guy's information. He gave him a tour of the club and the whole thing. And as soon as the guy, as soon as the guy sat down or as soon as the guy left or something like that, you know, but obviously he, you know, price presented the membership and all that kind of stuff. He texts Bubakar, all the information. So the guy comes in interested in the membership. They walk him and give him a tour of the club. And, you know, he presents the prices. He's in a membership. This is everything we're doing, all that kind of stuff. And he texts Bubakar immediately. Immediately he texts Bubakar right about the about the new prospect. So Bubakar is at lunch. He pulls out his phone. And this is this is just a story that Mark is telling me. And I'm, I'm getting to a point. So just stay with me on this. But so Bubakar. According to Mark, Bubakar basically calls the guy that just walks in and boom, he closes the sale over the phone before before he even gets back from lunch. And I'm bringing all this up because mentality, this is all a mentality thing, right? So the guy comes in for a membership. Again, Bubakar just happens to be at lunch, but his cell phone is available. He still knows, look, if I don't make enough sales, I don't eat. I don't pay my bills. I don't eat. You know, I don't, I don't, basically I can't survive if I'm not making a certain number of sales. That's after my salary or whatever it is. And because I get in a new prospect now, now I got to say to myself, okay, if somebody does come in, I happen to be on lunch. Mark, you know, hits him with the alley-oop, he does what he has to do, and then throws him the contact, and then he closes the sale. Now, when it comes to this, this was actually before iPhones were really big. Back then, it was just, you know, I think it was Blackberries or something like that. And a phone was actually used as a phone, where you actually call people and text people and communicate with people, and the internet was supposed to be on a device like I have right now. But obviously, it's evolved in which this thing has actually become the internet, the phone, and the, the internet communicator and your way of surfing the web and all that kind of stuff, right? So it becomes everything. So it's even kind of expedited nowadays. But the bottom line, the point of it is when you have certain forms of technology and there's certain measurable goals that you need to be hitting, you need to wire yourself and create opportunity. You need to, let's say, wire yourself in a way where this, these new forms of technology are working towards your benefit, whatever the result and whatever the bottom line may be. So for Bubakar, it was selling as many gym memberships as possible. And even though he might have been on lunch at that particular time, he's still able to say, OK, look, I got the, I got my BlackBerry, I got my phone. Let me just call this guy because I know he's already interested. Mark already vetted him out. Boom, let's close the sale and get things done. I put one membership up just over just being here while I'm at lunch, not even at the gym. That's what I mean when I say entrepreneur. That's what I mean when I say you got to be thinking in a certain way. You got to be thinking of how you are able to serve the overall organization. Also, and more important, you got to figure out ways in which you can be helping yourself in the process. All right, actually, let me rephrase that. It's more so about helping yourself while helping the overall organization. And when you're able to collide and you mix these things and you keep mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing it, eventually something hits you in which you're able to really start to use the leverage and use everything that you've learned and create things on your own, but not do it in a disrespectful way, not do it in a way in which you're kind of moving away from what your, uh, what your main thing actually was. All right. So Again, yeah, I have a lot of these. I have a ton of these. We come. This is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we're definitely at around 20 episodes of the Wintrepreneur Wednesday, and there's absolutely no plans at all. It's slowing down. Uh, if you want to dive deeper into all my work, it's makeayoungmove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. Would love to come in and host a workshop, do a workshop for your business so I can really teach this entrepreneur mindset to a group of employees, a staff, in which you'll walk away feeling like, okay, or walk away feeling as a business owner, you'll walk away feeling very confident in the the work that your staff is going to be doing, but more so, more importantly, your actual staff, the people that will be in attendance at the workshop, they will be walking away knowing, hey, I know my role, I know how I could benefit, and I know how I can really give my all to this business because it doesn't matter what the job is, it doesn't matter what the company is, as long as they're giving you a paycheck every two weeks, there's a certain thing that you can be doing, but it's really about you know unlocking these things because that you're showing up and there's something deeper and getting deeper with your staff so you know exactly what's driving them to get to work every single day. And those are the things that you really have to be pushing as you're providing your, I know, 
well, you're providing your job descriptions and your objectives and you're presenting your results and all that kind of stuff. So we'll dive into all that stuff. Again, main website, it's makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. Just simply hit the tab that says move swiftly speaker and, you know, schedule a call with me and we'll, you know, get on and get all, get all that stuff scheduled. So we went out there, continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.